Is it working? <laughs> okay, so hopefully you're ready for more Pokemon. So I'm going to talk about <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about the Pokemon data structure. So um, before I start, there's the pet slide that everyone must have, <laughs> and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about me also. Uh, so I've been playing Pokemon since 1999. Um, I've written papers on Pokemon uh, in undergrad. <laughs> um, I spent 400 hours playing Pokemon on just one game. <laughs> so I'm one of those children who never recovered. <laughs> okay, so what is Pokemon? Well, Alex already uh, covered this yesterday, so thank you. Um, I get to spend more time <laughs> on content. Um, so uh, Pokebank was an app that was released by Nintendo, which is a company that makes Pokemon, initially only open to Japan. Um, and so many, and the app is used in order to uh, store Pokemon, so users can upload their Pokemon onto Nintendo servers. And the servers were so flooded with Pokemon, just by, just by Japanese Pokemon, um, by players in Japan, that they had to close down the servers and then delay the worldwide release for several months. But the thing is, Pokemon are tiny. So we can count in units of Pokemon, so let's say that one hour of a Netflix stream is 792 megabytes um, of data, and one Pokemon is about 232 bytes currently. So if you do a little bit of math, that's 3.4 million Pokemon that you can stream um, using the same data as Netflix. It's one show. Um, so let's get into like, uh, what Pokemon are and what sort of data is stored in them. So Pokemon have stats because they battle each other. They have characteristics. They also have species. Um, so you can see here are some examples of what that looks like. And um, also here is uh, the UI of the display of all the Pokemon's information. So there's a lot on here. You can see that. And there's actually more pages. Um, so that's quite a bit. So now that we kind of know what Pokemon is, uh, let's look at the actual data structure. So I'm going to start on binary, and we're actually going to get into the hex. Um, so everything um, on a computer is stored in binary. Don't panic. It's going to be OK. But this is a Pokemon. This is a, gener <laughs> this is a second generation Pokemon. And you can't really read this unless you're like, new from the matrix. So let's make this easier to parse. Um, so eight bits, um, eight binary numbers make up one byte. Uh, and that's usually how computers store information. So we can um, divide this up, and it looks Ni nicer? Not, not really. Um, this is not easy to read at all. <laughs> so don't panic. Don't panic. Um, so we're going to change this into hex, which is hexadecimal. It's another counting system that's in base 16. Uh, basically, we take the first four um, binary uh, bits, and we take the last four, we transform them into hex numbers. So this is 0, 3 in hex. We can do that with every single byte in here. So I've done that for you. So this is, this is the Pokemon now. Still not easy to read. Um, so the way that we can change this into something that's parsable by humans is through encoding. So basically, we represent uh, letters of the alphabet and characters as bytes, um, just like Unicode. Thanks, Marissa, for talking about that yesterday. So we humans can use an encoding table to figure this out. Um, so this is just from Bulbapedia. And uh, we can do that with a string right here. And this is a Pokemon's nickname. So we'll see how this works. So if we take this string, these bytes, we can map them out onto the table. So we take the first byte um, right there, 95, and we can just line it up with the, uh, the table. So we take the 9, we align it with the vertical axis, and then we take the 5 and we align it with the horizontal axis. We figure out where it meets in the middle. That's a V. And then we just replace it right there. So we can keep on doing that for the whole entire string. So E, Venusaur, 50 right there, 5, 0, the byte, is just um, a control character that says the string is ended. And then after that, the rest of it is junk. Um, so th this turns out to be very hard to, to figure out on Macs if you're uh, trying to use a hex editor. Um, as I found out when I read these instructions and thought it was easy, and then and I got into encoding systems, and then I downloaded Homebrew. I'm not a programmer, so th this is very difficult for me. And then I started using Xcode. <laughs> and just kept on going. And then I was up at 4 AM the, the day before work. Don't, don't tell my employer. Um, OK, so um, going back to uh, where these bytes were, so we noticed that the string was actually a lot longer um, than it needed to be. And this is because Pokemon are stored um, in a structure where the location of the bytes matter. So no matter what, the nickname of the Pokemon is going to be stored in the same number of bytes. And it's going to be stored in the same location. So you can see um, the different areas that store different things in different colors. 
So you can think of a Pokemon as like a network packet. Um, so this is like a packet map, and everything is stored according to location. But how can we encode everything in such few bytes? Because we saw before that a Pokemon had all this information plus more. Um, so let's focus just on the species of the Pokemon and all the information stored with that. So the Pokemon species has a species name, species number, base stats, species moves. These are all the same for all the Pokemon of the same species. So how do we do this? Well, we can just use pointers, uh, which makes it easy because um, a pointer is a value that is an address to a different location um, that stores the information that you need. So for example, um, you can store the species information, all of it in a different place, and have pointers that point to it in the Pokemon data structure. So that's kind of like a Pokedex, right? Um, so basically, the species information is stored in one byte right there, and it just points to the Pokedex entry right there, so Venusaur. So we got it. Um, so that makes it easy. And the extra benefit is if you add more information to the Pokedex, you don't have to change the data structure at all which is also great because we have like 700 Pokemon and more. Um, okay, so now that we know how the Pokemon data structure sort of works, let's see uh, how it's changed over the years because the games have continually updated. So uh, generation, generation, generation one, generation two mappings are pretty much the same. There are a few um, like changes, a few things have been shifted around um, and it's been improved, but they can, they're pretty much um, similar. So generation, generation, generation one, generation two, you are forwards and backwards compatible. You can trade Pokemon back and forth as long as you're not trading stuff from generation two into generation one where it doesn't exist. Um, and, then, and then bad things happened. Well, not, not necessarily bad things, but a new console was introduced. So the Game Boy Advance, which is in 32-bit instead of 8-bit, like the previous games and consoles. So um, you can no longer trade Pokemon from generation one and two over to three because there are issues with the hardware, there are also data versioning issues, and also Pokemon, um, the Nintendo company added encryption because they, they don't actually want you to be looking at these sites. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can see all the yellow stuff is new um, in generation three mapping. Uh, compared to the generation two mapping. So nothing was um, compatible anymore, um, and that caused issues initially, but after that, everything was pretty great because everything is forward compatible from the, that point on because they thought about, the Pokemon company thought about how they would make things work for the future. So for example, you can catch an Onyx, a shiny Onyx, uh, on your Game Boy Advance in Pokemon Fire Red, transfer it over to um, your Pokemon Diamond, uh, transfer it change that and evolve your Pokemon into a Steelix, transfer over into Pokemon Black, transfer that into Pokemon Bank, Pokebank, which we talked about earlier, transfer that over to Pokemon X, and then transfer it to Pokemon Sun. So uh, this Pokemon is 10 years old, actually, <laughs> um, which is great. So you can, have, um, you can have a data structure from several, several years ago that's compatible with um, all forward games, uh, which is really cool. So I have two minutes left, so I'm actually going to show you how this works um, in a hex editor. So I have a Pokemon here um, that I've created through a Pokemon editor online. I wanted to show you a generation three Pokemon, but unfortunately because of the encryption that didn't work. But um, before you could actually edit the hex code um, in a game and put in this Pokemon, you could insert it into the game. So this is a Pokemon in the hex editor with the mappings um, associated with it. So you can see if I highlight this, this is a Pokemon's nickname, and you can see that I've also um, included the encoding in here, so you can actually read it. So with that, we can also create a new Pokemon. So um, someone shout out a Pokemon that they want. Squirtle. Okay, I heard Squirtle. <laughs> and we're also gonna, um, Say the owner is Bing Bing Con. Um, what should we name it? Anyone? Squirt. Okay. <laughs> I heard of that. So now we just uh, save this. Hopefully. Okay. Um, that was not the right spelling. And then we can open it in a hex editor like this. And. We can see all the information here. So 
This isn't really helpful unless we have the mapping over it. And we can see that we have, in fact, successfully created a squirrel named Squirt, and it is owned by Bing Bang Con. And that's it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.